About five years ago, I posted a video titled, Three Quran Verses Every Christian Should Know. The idea of the video was that while not all Christians need to know everything about Islam, all Christians should know something about Islam. Islam is simply too big and too relevant to current events and to the global church for a Christian not to know anything about it. So I gave three Quran verses that would be a good place to start. Quran chapters are called surahs. In that original video, I cited Surah 4, verse 157, where Allah claims that Jesus was never crucified, thus contradicting not only the gospel, but all of history. Surah 5, verse 47, where Allah commands Christians to judge by the gospel, thus contradicting Muslim assertions that the gospel has been corrupted. And Surah 9, verse 29, where Allah commands Muslims to violently subjugate Jews and Christians, thus refuting people who tell us that Islam has nothing to do with violence. I hope you watched that video and that you're now familiar with those verses. If not, there's a link to the video in the description box. But you know, five years is a long time and Islam is expanding, so it's always a good idea for Christians to increase our understanding of Islam and to learn a few more essential verses. With this in mind, here are three more Quran verses every Christian should know. First, Surah 5, verse 116, where Allah attempts to define the doctrine of the Trinity. Earlier in Surah 5, Allah warns Christians not to believe in the Trinity, but in verse 116, we finally get Allah's description of the doctrine of the Trinity. We read, And remember when Allah will say on the day of resurrection, O Isa, Jesus, Son of Maryam, Mary, did you say unto men, Worship me and my mother as two gods besides Allah? He will say, Glory be to you. It was not for me to say what I had no right to say. Had I said such a thing, you would surely have known it. You know what is in my inner self, though I do not know what is in yours. Truly you, only you, are the all-knower of all that is hidden and unseen. So, according to Allah, Christians believe in a trinity made up of Allah, Jesus, and Mary, who are three separate gods who work together as one. Needless to say, Christians have never believed in a trinity made up of God, Jesus, and Mary, so there are only two possibilities here. Either Allah knows what the doctrine of the trinity is, but he's deliberately misrepresenting it, in which case he's deceptive, or Allah doesn't know what the doctrine of the Trinity is, in which case he's ignorant. Deceptive or ignorant, take your pick. Second, Surah 18, verse 27, where Allah reveals to Muhammad that no one can change his words. Allah declares, And recite what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. There is none who can alter his words, and you shall not find any refuge besides him. According to the Quran, who can change Allah's words? There is none who can alter his words. And yet our Muslim friends insist that even though Allah revealed the Torah and the gospel, his words were changed by Jews and Christians. So we point out to them that their God clearly says, there is none who can alter his words. Here our Muslim friends reply, Oh, that only means that no one can change his words in the Quran. But this verse doesn't say that no one can alter the Quran. It says that no one can alter Allah's words. Hence, when our Muslim friends proclaim that Jews and Christians have repeatedly changed Allah's words, they're calling their God a liar, and they're calling the Quran a book of lies. Third, Surah 98, verse 6, where Allah describes his view of Jews, Christians, and idolaters. Verily, those who disbelieve in the religion of Islam, the Quran, and Prophet Muhammad, from among the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, and al-Mushrikun, Mushrikun are idolaters, will abide in the fire of hell. They are the worst of creatures. Notice, Jews, Christians, and idolaters are according to Allah, the worst of creatures. We're lower than dogs, lower than pigs. 
So, if you've ever wondered why groups like ISIS or Boko Haram or Al-Qaeda or Al-Shabaab or the Taliban will not hesitate to kill people from non-Muslim groups, it's because we're the worst of creatures. Allah says that we are complete, utter, total garbage. Of course, I have to point out, this doesn't mean that your Muslim friends view you as the worst of creatures. Many Muslims live far better lives than the Quran commands them to live, and many Muslims believe things that are far better than what the Quran commands them to believe. But they don't know that their beliefs and practices are out of line with the Quran. They think that the Quran refutes the doctrine of the Trinity, when the God of the Quran apparently doesn't even know what the doctrine is. They think that the Quran says that the Jewish and Christian scriptures have been corrupted when it says just the opposite. They think that the Quran promotes friendship with Jews and Christians when it most certainly doesn't. One of the most important things we can do as Christians is to tell our Muslim friends what the Quran actually says. When they find out that the God of the Quran is either deceptive or ignorant, and that the Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures, scriptures that contradict the Quran, and that the Quran promotes a view of non-Muslims that most Muslims simply cannot accept, our Muslim friends are going to have a lot of thinking to do. And all that thinking will eventually lead them out of Islam.